Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And I'm back with another video. In our previous video, we have seen like how we can extract the SharePoint attachment content and can use it in our Dataverse Excel or SharePoint list. In my this video, we will see like how we will get the content of an email attachment. Okay, so let's get started. Come to make.powerautomate.com as usual and click on new flow. Automated cloud flow. Give your name. Extract email attachments content. Select when a new or uh, search for new arrival. Okay, when a new email arrives. We'll sign in to get the connection. Once your connection is all set, you are ready. Okay. Folder will be your inbox. Include attachments. Yes. Important. So as of now, I'm just giving it any only with attachments so run this flow only if your email is having any attachment otherwise don't hit this flow so I'll select that now it will be more very much similar to what we have done to extract the content of a sharepoint attachment so here also i'll add one compose which will act as an inter uh, key um, carrier okay so i'll just give a name similar name next Line okay, and just click on it. Fine, you will add one more compose. This you will give a similar name again attachment content. We will get the content from our trigger that is from our email. Just type content. You will get attachments content and your email can have multiple attachments. So it will get into and apply to each block. Fine. Now add one more compose. And here there will be one extra step in which we will decode it the base into base 64 string. Okay. So just call that function from your expression base 64 to string. And uh, what parameter we will pass? We will pass the output of this attachment contents. And click on OK. Fine. Up till here, we'll just save it and we'll run it and we'll see what we are getting in this compose. Fine. So what we need to do, we need to go to the email, which connection you have used here in your trigger. Send an email to that connection. I will give a name as test load and I will attach one. And click on send. This will definitely hit our flow. Go back into the industry. Receive an email. Right, test upload here. We will see what is the run history. Okay, so this is not triggering our email. So this is a very common issue with Power Automate that sometimes your uh, flow doesn't get triggered. Okay, so what in that case, what you need to do is come here, delete your trigger. Try to re-add it. So as you can see here, there are two. Okay, V2 and V3. We will use this one, Office 365 Outlook. Okay, so earlier we have used V2. That might be the reason that it was not reading an email. We use Office 365 Outlook. Okay. Again, it will try to connect. Okay. 
click connection is done again we'll just set some flags it will include yes and it will run only when it has attachments so again the reference must have gone so what we will do we just remove it and try to add it above so that you know it will not get into another loop okay we'll just drag it out and move it up and again we'll add contents from our trigger which is nothing but your attachments content again it will get into a loop we just drag this compose inside the loop save it and try to execute the okay there's no run history as of now so again we will send an email receive an email with this approach too let's go back and see if this time the run history is there or not so this time it has executed our flow now we'll just see the run history what we have got as an output from the compose So we got the content of what we have uploaded in this text file. Okay, let's proceed to the next steps. Like what we have done in the previous video, same thing we will do again. We will split and just give a name as the code. Okay, and now we will add one more compose. So this is the only extra step. The rest all will be same as what we are done in SharePoint attachments. Compose. And we will split it with the next line. Because we need to store this text file information line by line in our Excel or in our Dataverse table or in our SharePoint list. Okay. So just split the output of this decode with the next line. So it will store as an array of string with different lines. And it will definitely have one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines. Okay. Now we will add one more compose. Same. To calculate the length or directly also we can do it. But it's better to, you know, have it into a separate, separate compose. So, we calculate the length of this array, which we have got from this compose. Length of the output of the above compose. Go to the dynamic contents and get the output. Uh, come back to the expression, give the length. Have a dynamic content and get the output of the above compose and click on OK. This is also done. Now we'll follow the do under and it will execute. For this, also we need to have an increment variable that it will count and act as an index of an array. Initialize a variable. I of type integer do want to give that variable and it should be greater than or equal to the length of this output. One more compose. It is always good to give names to so follow the give the name of your composer or any variable to follow the coding standards okay now what we need to do we need to split based on what type of file you have so if it if you're in if, if you're not having any colon or dash or anything in your file it's fine but if it is there just separate it so that you will get only the value part and you will not get the header part. So I'll just split the output of the uh, this file content. Okay, this one space separated by this colon 
I have it in my um, uh, text file. And this compose will be an array. Okay, So we need to give an index position. So for which index we are talking about. So we have that index value stored in this variable i. We'll give that. And I want only the value part. So I'll give if any of the line is having this colon separated, it will become a two values and I am interested only in the last value. So I'll just give last. Close this last. And click on okay. And at the end, just increment that variable so that um, it will be go to the length of your array. And pick each index of your array. Increase it by one. See you. We'll try to execute the flow for the same text file. And analyze each step what we are getting in each of the compose output. Okay, it failed. Let's see what and why it has failed. Okay. First, we'll see what we got in the attachment. So we have got in the attachment some encoded file, which we have decoded in below using base 64 to string. We got all the content of a text file. What is the issue now? Or oh, I didn't save it. Okay, so we will change the spelling of split. To split okay click on update and one more thing i've noticed that this do until is running 60 times okay so what we have done wrong is we have not initialized this variable we should initialize it with zero and every time it, it will increase by one and it will run only up to the length of my string of array okay now we'll save it And test it. Okay, this time it didn't take that much of time because we, one step we have added like I should be initialized with zero. This time it goes only to seven because the length is seven. Okay. Now we'll see one by one first line is in this compose. Second line is this. Third line is the name of the employee. Then the third, fourth line will be the employee ID. Then it's address. And then the telephone number. Okay. So in the next step, you can add your uh, Excel. You can add one by one to your columns. The value which you are getting in the compose. Okay. I think you find this video helpful. And stay tuned with me because in the next video, I will cover how you can read your CSV file information and store it into your database table. Okay, till then, bye-bye, take care.